Hey, what's going on guys? Oscar Mini here, and this is the Huawei Y8B, which I've had for about two weeks now. I'm gonna share with you guys my thoughts on the smartphone, the stuff you gotta know about this device, and so, without taking much of your time, yo guys, let's get started. The Y8P was announced sometime, roughly two months ago now, and this is one of the mid low tier devices from Huawei I really wanted to test out in recent times. I wasn't as excited for some of the other devices they turned out lately, which personally felt like rebranding the same device, but this time things were a little switched up and I had to try this one out. But before I share with you guys my experience with this device, let me take you guys through the unboxing phase. Unboxing the Y8P is what you'd expect of a smartphone. You get to see the smartphone first off, which I'd always set aside and dig down further. Next up is a smaller box housing, the SIM card ejector, a silicone case and the quick start guide. Furthermore, at the 10 watt charger, actually underwhelming for the price. I expected to see a fast charger here, but you get a 10 watt charger from the smartphone. So let's move on to other things in the box, which include the USB Type-C cable, and also the 3.5 millimeter earphones as expected from a typical Huawei unboxing or even every other smartphone actually. I know I kind of complain a lot about big devices on this channel and at this point you guys know I prefer smartphones that can be used comfortably in one-handed mode and that's about what you get from this device the Huawei Y8P. Now for a lot of people this device would be the perfect size device they would love. You know it's not that excessively large size device as it sports a 6.3 inch display at the front, housing a dewdrop notch with a rear housing a triple camera setup which I'll really talk about in its dedicated section. You can actually skip right now to the camera section if that's the reason you're watching this video. I'll have the timestamp links in the description box below as always. Okay, while we're still taking a tour of the IO and buttons, you get the volume rocker and the power button to the right side of the smartphone, while this left side has the hybrid dual SIM slots. That is, you have an option to use a single SIM and a nano memory card, nano not micro this time, or just the dual SIMs. The bottom of the smartphone has the USB Type-C ports and the downfiring speaker openings. Not forgetting the mouthpiece opening at the left corner here. If you're scared you ain't seen a headphone jack here, worry not as that's at the top of the smartphone too. One other thing you might wonder about on the Y8P is where the fingerprint sensor sits and how you unlock the smartphone. You have a variety of options ranging from the face unlock feature, which isn't great at night in my test, and the in-display fingerprint option. The in-display fingerprint sensor here actually gets the job done, though it isn't the fastest series as expected for the price point of this device. But when paired with the face unlock feature from the Y8P, you have an almost seamless access to the UI on this phone. So a comfortable plastic yet fingerprinty finish with no splash proof in here kind of sums up the build you get from the smartphone. You can cover up this rear from smudges using the TPU case from within the box. It actually does help. Touching on the display you get on the Y8P, it is one of the most, no, let me rephrase this. This is the most interesting aspect of this device if you ask me. Here's why. You're getting a 6.3 inch OLED display with a dewdrop notch and at a resolution of 1080 by 2400, which is full HD. I honestly can't think of a phone around this price point which doesn't feature an LCD panel. I mean guys, take a look for yourself for the devices around the same price point with the Y8P, something like the Redmi Note 9S here. You still get an IPS LCD panel from this device. By the way, if you guys wanna see a comparison between these two smartphones, do let me know in the comment section below. So the display on the Huawei Y8P is actually richer, giving you deeper blacks, great viewing angles without issues, and vivid image reproduction. The display, in my opinion, is one of the major reasons you might want to pick up one of these devices. For the speakers, they are not the loudest, just tiny sounding speakers that get the job done from the bottom of the smartphone and they can be easily blocked out when you use a smartphone for gaming. You know, single speaker issues here. Powering the smartphone in terms of the processing is the Kirin 710F chipset. Same as that found on the Y9, Y9S from last year. You get six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. There's also a four gigabyte variant. As far as someone looking for a smartphone in the budget section, the performance here is pretty much okay. I do not promise you the best performance there is on a smartphone around this price. For instance, in terms of gameplay, as there are better devices out there giving you better performance for the same price. You definitely notice the stutters, but again, it felt okay gaming on this smartphone, and that's not because of the performance you're getting from the Y8P, but the comfort and size, weight, and the display made the gaming experience on this smartphone an overall good experience. 
The UI here is EMUI 10.1 based on Android 10 OS, if that's not obvious at this point. One aspect where things are not so good for this smartphone would be the fact that Google mobile services won't be working out of the box with this smartphone. You do not get things like Play Store, Google Maps, YouTube, Gmail, this kind of stuff here. There are ways to go about this here, but actually complicated for the average smartphone user. I never realized how much I use the services on my phone until I didn't have them on the smartphone. And Hilly went insane, actually. You have the Play Store alternative known as the Huawei App Gallery to get installation of apps on the smartphone. But guys, is this a turn off for you guys already? I'd really love to hear your thoughts on this issue here in the comment section below. 4,000 mAh battery is what you get in terms of the battery capacity, which is just there. Okay, I guess for the form factor. Screen on time for the Huawei Y8P is about six and a half hours in my test. I would say this would take a lot of people to the end of the day for an average to light use. Considering that you get a 4,000 mAh battery, you can understand the reason why you're getting a 10 watt charger and no fast charging feature on the smartphone from within the box. And charging up this device takes you a little over two hours to get it from zero to 100 using the charger included in the box here. On the cameras, you get a triple camera set up at the rear and the things are straight to the point here. You do not get those extra unnecessary cameras set up like a lot of other smartphones, budget smartphones give you. So specs wise, you have a 48 megapixel main sensor, 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. You also get a 16 megapixel front facing camera. It's as simple as that. Photos are decent if you ask me. Actually, you do not get mind-blowing photos from the smartphone. They tend to be a little less saturated than the competition for the prize. I really feel the photos could have been a little better, but then it is what it is. With ample lighting, you are good to go, giving you okay dynamic range as seen in the sample shot here. The selfies from this phone, that's where the prize and view are decent as seen, but again, could have been better. The Redmi Note 9S, for example, about the same price, gives you a little nicer front-facing image. When it comes to the night mode on here, it actually does a great job for what it is. It is really impressive. For videos, you are maxing out at 1080p 30fps for both the front and rear cameras. Okay dynamic range, but not something we haven't seen from Huawei in the past. I mean, with devices from last year, you get the same quality from the cameras. That sums up my camera experience on the Huawei Y8P. You shouldn't expect the best at this price, just expect a smartphone with decent cameras that get the job done. Picking up a unit will run you about 99,000 Naira or roughly $250. That's for the 6 gigs, 128 gigabyte variant I have here. As always, I'm gonna leave an updated pricing information in the description box below, so you could go there and check it out. So, the verdict. What are my final thoughts on the Huawei Y8P? For a $250 smartphone, there are a couple things you should consider before picking up this device. Would you be flexible enough to get or switch from a lot of Google services? That's if you don't use those right now. Maybe the Huawei app gallery over the Play Store, or even do you want to go through the hassle of sideloading this app to work on this device, which is an extra step to purchasing this smartphone? If those are things you are not willing to do, there are better alternatives or other alternatives in the market right now. But if this is not an issue for you and you love the OLED panels and a comfortable smartphone in terms of physical use and form factor, this is something or a smartphone you should consider. That's been it for this review. Do not forget to like, share, and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't done those already. What are you waiting for? Thanks for watching, and I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Kuidati. Thank <laughs> you.